Burkina Faso is navigating a difficult terrain in the face of Western-imposed weapon blockades, with resilience emerging as a defining characteristic. The nation's solidarity and determination in the face of punitive measures from the West has sparked global attention. Despite significant challenges from the weapon blockades, Burkina Faso remains committed to addressing internal security issues and fostering national stability. Burkina Faso's response to the weapon blockades reflects a strategic shift toward resilience and self-sufficiency, as the country reveals plans to face adversity like no other. The unfolding scenario raises critical questions about Burkina Faso's future trajectory and ability to overcome formidable challenges. As the country grapples with the impact of the blockade on equipment acquisition critical to its fight against rebels, the world waits to see how Burkina Faso will overcome these obstacles and emerge stronger on the path to progress and prosperity. Captain Ibrahim Tror explains how the blockade has had a significant impact on Burkina Faso's acquisition of equipment for the fight against insurgents. External forces impede the nation's ability to obtain critical self-defense tools, posing a significant challenge to its military efforts. The captain's frustration emphasizes the gravity of the situation and the negative impact on Burkina Faso's security landscape. The blockade not only prevents equipment acquisition, but it also has a negative impact on Burkina Faso's military personnel morale. He sheds light on the psychological effects of the prolonged struggle for resources on the soldiers. The frustration caused by the inability to access necessary tools breeds a sense of helplessness, dampening the spirits of the military forces. This discussion reveals the intricate relationship between material support and the troops' psychological well-being, emphasizing the blockade's broader implications. In the face of the blockade, Burkina Faso is forced to consider alternative approaches to overcoming equipment acquisition challenges. Tror delves into innovative approaches that are being considered to circumvent the imposed restrictions. What impact does the equipment acquisition blockade have on Burkina Faso's overall security situation? The broader implications of the equipment acquisition blockade go beyond the immediate military setbacks. Captain Traoré describes how the blockade worsens the overall security situation in Burkina Faso. With insurgent threats looming, the country's inability to strengthen its military capabilities puts it at risk. What diplomatic efforts are underway to lift the blockade and support Burkina Faso's fight against insurgents? Given the gravity of the situation, Captain Tror discusses diplomatic efforts to lift the blockade and gain international support for Burkina Faso's fight against insurgents. The captain's insights shed light on the complexities of navigating international relations during a crisis, emphasizing the importance of working together to address security challenges. The blockade complicates Burkina Faso's fight against insurgents and has ramifications for its relations with traditional allies. Captain Troer offers a candid assessment of how the nation's alliances are impacted by the inability to secure critical equipment. This section delves into diplomatic complexities and examines the strain on partnerships and the difficulties of maintaining strong relationships in the face of external pressures. What lessons can other countries draw from Burkina Faso's experience with the equipment acquisition blockade? Here's a reminder to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let us continue now. Captain Tror's story extends beyond the specifics of Burkina Faso's situation, providing useful insights for other countries facing similar challenges. How is the blockade affecting Burkina Faso's long-term security strategy and preparedness? The blockade's enduring nature necessitates a thorough examination of its implications for Burkina Faso's long-term security strategy and preparedness. Captain Tror discusses how the country's security posture is being reassessed as a result of the prolonged limitations on equipment acquisition. How does regional collaboration help to mitigate the impact of the blockade on Burkina Faso's security? Regional security collaboration frequently involves neighboring countries working together to address common threats and challenges. In the case of Burkina Faso, which is facing a blockade that prevents equipment acquisition, regional collaboration could play a critical role in mitigating the effects. 
Regional collaboration allows for the exchange of intelligence and information about security threats. Burkina Faso could benefit from a shared understanding of the insurgency landscape, allowing it to better anticipate and respond. Collaborative efforts can include pooling resources and capabilities to overcome the limitations imposed by the blockade. Neighboring countries may provide equipment, training, or other assistance to help Burkina Faso strengthen its security infrastructure. Regional collaboration could include joint military operations or coordinated counterinsurgency strategies. Working together, the region's countries could strengthen their collective military capabilities, making it more difficult for insurgents to cross borders. Neighboring countries can help with diplomatic efforts to resolve the blockade. Regional collaboration by presenting a united front can strengthen diplomatic appeals for international assistance and the lifting of restrictions. Regional collaboration can extend beyond security concerns to include humanitarian efforts. Countries facing security challenges can work together to address conflicts, humanitarian impact, and assist affected populations. How can the international community help Burkina Faso overcome its challenges in equipment acquisition? Diplomatic efforts by the international community can have a significant impact. Countries sympathetic to Burkina Faso's situation can advocate for lifting the blockade or easing equipment acquisition restrictions. Diplomatic dialogues and negotiations can help address the underlying causes of the challenges. Providing financial aid to Burkina Faso for equipment acquisition is a direct way to help the country. Financial assistance can help Burkina Faso overcome budgetary constraints and acquire the tools needed to defend against insurgents. Nations interested in supporting Burkina Faso's security efforts can consider selling military equipment or providing military aid. This could include providing weapons, vehicles, communication systems, and other critical tools to improve the country's defense capabilities. The international community can help by providing training and capacity-building initiatives for Burkina Faso's military forces. This not only improves the armed forces' capabilities, but also ensures that the acquired equipment is used effectively. Participating in collaborative security initiatives with Burkina Faso can be advantageous. This could include joint military exercises, intelligence sharing, and collaborative efforts to address the region's broader security challenges. Recognizing the broader impact of conflicts on civilian populations, the international community can offer humanitarian assistance to those affected. This assistance can help meet the needs of displaced people and communities affected by security. International organizations and alliances can help to coordinate support for Burkina Faso. Engaging with regional bodies or organizations, such as the United Nations, can increase the impact of international assistance. Beyond immediate assistance, addressing the root causes of conflict and insecurity in the region is critical. The international community can help with diplomatic efforts to address underlying issues and promote stability in Burkina Faso. What is the nature of the conflict and the strategies used in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism? Captain Chor's insights shed light on the nature of the Burkina Faso conflict, which he described as a guerrilla war lasting two to three years. This protracted conflict implies a complex and evolving situation that necessitates adaptive strategies from Burkinabe authorities. Chor's observations provide insight into the challenges that the region's security forces face, as well as the dynamic nature of the conflict. How comprehensive is Burkina Faso's national counter-terrorism strategy? Burkina Faso's approach includes the entire country. This indicates a recognition of the insurgency's widespread nature, with efforts to address security challenges spanning the country rather than just specific regions. Captain Troer expresses a commitment to providing escorts and protecting routes. This suggests a multifaceted strategy that extends beyond direct military engagement. Protecting transportation routes and critical infrastructure is critical for maintaining stability and preventing insurgent movements. The discussion of a recent confrontation in the Jebu Zone emphasizes the difficulties posed by rugged terrain in north-central Burkina Faso.
Burkina Faso's approach recognizes the importance of adaptability in military strategies for navigating and countering insurgent activities in diverse and challenging terrains. The involvement of the Burkina Air Force is mentioned, implying that Burkina Faso's strategy includes leveraging air power in counterterrorism efforts. This emphasizes a comprehensive approach that involves various branches of the military in addressing the dynamic and evolving nature of terrorist threats. Effective counterterrorism strategies frequently include intelligence and surveillance operations. Understanding an insurgent group's movements, tactics, and networks is critical for developing targeted and informed responses. It is important to note that the information provided is based on a broad context. Specific details of Burkina Faso's comprehensive approach to combating terrorism would necessitate more in-depth information. Burkina Faso's strategy's effectiveness would be determined by factors such as security force coordination, intelligence capabilities, regional collaboration, and ability to adapt to changing security threats. What challenges has Burkina Faso faced in obtaining international support, and how has this affected its defense capabilities? Captain Abraham Tror discusses Burkina Faso's difficulties in obtaining international assistance, particularly in acquiring critical equipment for its defense efforts. This lack of international support has serious implications for Burkina Faso's defense capabilities, limiting its ability to effectively combat insurgent threats. One of the most significant challenges is the refusal of key countries to sell weapons to Burkina Faso. This denial restricts the country's access to critical military equipment, ranging from firearms to advanced technology, limiting its ability to respond adequately to security threats. The article implies that these refusals were influenced by geopolitical considerations, diplomatic complexities, or other factors. The implications for Burkina Faso's defense capabilities are significant. Without access to modern weapons, the military may be unable to effectively engage insurgents. Outdated or insufficient equipment can jeopardize the military's operational readiness and effectiveness. This, in turn, affects the country's ability to maintain security and stability, especially in the face of evolving and dynamic security threats. The refusal of international assistance has an immediate impact on Burkina Faso's defense needs, while also raising broader concerns about the global commitment to combating terrorism. It emphasizes the difficulties that nations face when seeking assistance during security crises. According to the article, the geopolitics surrounding Burkina Faso's fight against insurgents are complex, requiring the country to navigate intricate international alliances while facing a dire security situation. What effect does refusing to sell weapons to certain countries, including France and the United States, have on Burkina Faso's immediate defense needs? The refusal of certain countries, most notably France and the United States, to sell arms to Burkina Faso has a significant impact on the country's immediate defense requirements. The denial of international support has a direct impact on Burkina Faso's ability to obtain critical military equipment, with far-reaching consequences. The most immediate and direct effect is on Burkina Faso's military capabilities. Without access to modern and advanced weaponry, the armed forces may be ill-equipped to effectively combat insurgent threats. This may jeopardize their ability to carry out successful operations while maintaining national security and stability. Burkina Faso's armed forces may suffer from a lack of access to new and advanced military equipment, compromising their operational readiness. Outdated or insufficient weaponry can cause logistical problems, maintenance issues, and reduced overall efficiency in responding to security threats. Modern military equipment allows defense forces to pursue a variety of strategic options. Denying Burkina Faso access to such equipment limits the country's ability to respond to evolving security threats using a variety of tactics and strategies. This can make the country more predictable and susceptible to insurgent attacks. Burkina Faso is more vulnerable to insurgent attacks due to a lack of or outdated weapons. The nation's inability to acquire advanced technology and equipment puts it at a disadvantage in terms of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities, making it more difficult to detect and counter security threats. The rejection to sell weapons adds to the potential deterioration of Burkina Faso's defense infrastructure.
A lack of access to modern equipment can impede long-term defense planning and modernization efforts, affecting the nation's overall security posture. In the face of an insurgency, inadequate military capabilities can increase both human and financial costs. The military may sustain more casualties, and the financial burden of addressing security challenges with limited resources can put a strain on the country's economy. The denial of international assistance in obtaining weapons may have an impact on the confidence and morale of Burkina Faso's military forces. A sense of inadequacy and frustration can permeate the military ranks, affecting troops' motivation and effectiveness. Burkina Faso may be forced to seek alternative sources for military equipment, which may not always be dependable or provide the required capabilities. This dependency may present additional compatibility, interoperability, and long-term sustainability challenges. What broader implications does Burkina Faso's lack of international support for its defense efforts have for the world's commitment to counterterrorism? The lack of international support for Burkina Faso's defense efforts has far-reaching consequences for the global commitment to combating terrorism. This situation raises concerns about the international community's collective responsibility to address security issues. It emphasizes the difficulties of navigating geopolitical alliances in a critical security situation. The denial of international support to Burkina Faso calls into question global solidarity and shared responsibility in the fight against terrorism. Effective counterterrorism efforts frequently necessitate international cooperation and support, demonstrating a commitment to collective security. The refusal of certain countries, including France and the United States, to sell weapons to Burkina Faso indicates a selective approach to counterterrorism efforts. This raises concerns about the consistency and fairness of international aid, as different countries may receive varying levels of assistance based on geopolitical factors. Burkina Faso's security challenges are not isolated. They have regional implications. A lack of international support may contribute to regional instability, as terrorist threats frequently cross national borders. This demonstrates the interconnectedness of global security and the importance of comprehensive and collaborative approaches. The situation demonstrates the potential conflict between geopolitical considerations and the overarching goal of combating terrorism. Nations may prioritize diplomatic or strategic interests over direct involvement in specific regions, potentially impeding global efforts to address the underlying causes of terrorism. Burkina Faso's struggle to gain international support demonstrates the diplomatic challenges of navigating alliances during security crisis. Geopolitical complexities may have an impact on existing alliances and partnerships, as well as broader diplomatic relations. The lack of support for Burkina Faso raises concerns about the effectiveness of current global counterterrorism frameworks. It calls into question the effectiveness of international mechanisms for dealing with security issues, as well as the need for a more cohesive and consistent approach. Beyond security concerns, a lack of international support may have humanitarian consequences. Insufficient defense capabilities can result in increased violence, displacement, and human suffering, emphasizing the humanitarian consequences of geopolitical decisions. The inability to effectively address security challenges due to a lack of international support may exacerbate local grievances and frustrations. This, in turn, may fuel radicalization and recruitment by insurgent groups, resulting in a cycle of insecurity with far-reaching implications. What effect does the ban on weapon sales have on Burkina Faso? Burkina Faso's Long-Term Defensive Capabilities The denial of weapon sales to Burkina Faso has far-reaching consequences for the country's defense capabilities. Certain countries, including France and the United States, have refused to provide Burkina Faso with critical military equipment, posing a number of challenges that could have long-term consequences for the country's security posture. Burkina Faso's armed forces risk becoming technologically obsolete due to a lack of access to modern weapons. Over time, as military technologies advance globally, the country's defense capabilities may lag, limiting its ability to effectively counter evolving security threats. Burkina Faso may struggle to modernize its military infrastructure if it is denied access to advanced weapons. 
The lack of modern equipment impedes efforts to improve the overall capabilities of the armed forces, such as communication systems, surveillance technology, and unified command structures. Long-term denial of weapon sales may exacerbate training and skill gaps among Burkina Faso's military personnel. Soldiers who are not exposed to and trained in the latest technologies may lack the necessary skills to operate modern equipment, reducing the overall effectiveness of the armed forces. The lack of advanced weaponry restricts Burkina Faso's strategic and tactical options. Military strategies frequently rely on a mix of conventional and advanced capabilities, and the latter's absence can limit the country's ability to respond to diverse and dynamic security challenges. As security threats evolve, Burkina Faso may become more vulnerable to new and sophisticated forms of insurgency. Denial of weapon sales can impede the nation's ability to keep up with new tactics, technologies, and strategies used by insurgent groups. In the long run, the refusal of weapon sales can have a negative impact on Burkina Faso's national security. The nation may face difficulties in deterring and responding to external threats, potentially resulting in a weakened defense posture and increased vulnerability to regional and global security dynamics. Burkina Faso may be forced to rely on alternative sources for military equipment, which may not always have the required capabilities. This dependency can lead to issues with compatibility, interoperability, and the long-term viability of the defense infrastructure. Modern military capabilities frequently act as a deterrent to potential adversaries. The refusal of weapon sales may reduce Burkina Faso's deterrence capacity, potentially emboldening insurgent groups and undermining the country's ability to deter external threats. Burkina Faso may allocate more resources to compensate for the lack of international support in its pursuit of alternative defense solutions. This strain on national resources has the potential to impact other critical sectors, affecting overall economic development and stability. Long-term denials of weapon sales may pose ongoing diplomatic challenges for Burkina Faso. It can strain relations with countries that have refused to support, potentially jeopardizing broader diplomatic engagements and alliances. But how does Tror plan on dealing with all of this? Captain Tror could advocate for diplomatic efforts to address the geopolitical issues that have resulted in the denial of weapon sales. Engaging in diplomatic dialogues with relevant nations and international bodies could be a strategy for increasing understanding and support. Burkina Faso could look into diversifying its allies and seeking support from a wider range of countries. Providing military aid, weapons, or training can prove Burkina Faso's defense capabilities. Captain Troer could focus on mobilizing internal resources to improve Burkina Faso's defense capabilities. This could include optimizing existing military assets, investing in domestic defense industries, and allocating resources efficiently to meet both immediate and long-term security needs. Burkina Faso could consider forming alliances with countries facing similar security challenges. Collaborative efforts with neighboring countries or those with similar security concerns could provide mutual assistance in combating terrorism. Captain Troer may approach the international community and organizations for assistance in addressing Burkina Faso's security concerns. This could involve seeking financial aid, technical support, or collaborative efforts in training and capacity building. Addressing the root causes of conflict through humanitarian and development initiatives could be part of a comprehensive strategy. Captain Troer might emphasize initiatives that promote stability, social development, and economic opportunities to reduce conditions conducive to insurgency. Given the challenges posed by the terrain in north-central Burkina Faso, Captain Troer might consider adaptive military strategies. This could involve specialized training for troops, using technology for surveillance, and the development of tactics suited to the rugged landscapes. Captain Troer may prioritize strategic communication to garner international understanding and support. Articulating Burkina Faso's security challenges, the impact of weapons denial, and the importance of international collaboration may help to foster empathy and support. Do you think Troer can handle all of this? What future do you see for Burkina Faso? Should international communities assist it? According to the comments section, Burkina Faso is on the right track. Would you like to watch more videos like this one?
If so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.